honestly frighten me to death. Uh, my name's Donna. I'm very uh, suave and sophisticated, as that can tell with my voice. Um, I come from a little village called Barnsley, near Sheffield. Anybody from Barnsley? Anybody up there? No? Anybody near? Where? Hull! Fabulous. Stoke! Stoke! Stoke on Trent? Yes. Is that where it is? Stoke on Trent? Sorry. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anywhere? Lancashire. Which bit? Okay, well we're not fine today, over the roses. We're okay. We're only because we're friends. So it's all about inclusion and diversity. And this is the uh, points for pride. And uh, we've had some fantastic points on earlier. It's absolutely tremendous, this island. My friends in Sheffield say to me, do you not get bored, Donna, on the island? You know, they feel really sorry for me. And I said, you must be joking. There's everything on every weekend. There's always, always, always something on. So, and one of the things that I'm involved with is the spoken word um, scene that Tim here, the gorgeous Tim's involved in. And um, we run events around the island. We performed at the Isle of Wight Festival and we have a fabulous time. So we're going to give an opportunity to uh, a gorgeous young woman um, called Izzy, the name is gorgeous, Izzy Rose Barclay. Is that nice? I mean, you know, that's a fantastic name. She's gonna be famous with that name. Izzy, are you ready? I want everybody to give her a big whoop whoop clap, chat, clap, clap. I said clap then. No, I didn't mean clap. I mean, you know, clap as in clap. And um, give her the opportunity to um, to be supported in her performance. Is it come to the stage? Woo! Thank you. Of life. They love to be scientists, chefs, mothers and artists. They love to be rough, tough, delicate and sweet. And that is me. And that is you. And that is us. Thank you. My next one, it was actually my 19th birthday a few weeks ago. This is a throwback to my 18th birthday. And it's called Happy Birthday. It was my birthday, just the other day. Now I'm 18, an adult, a woman, in charge of my finance, my health, my life. Yet until this day, I was only a kid. Hand up for the bathroom, no authority, no vote. But now it's all mine when I woke up that day. Suddenly, I'm responsible, mature, learned, and brave. From one day to the next, I'm suddenly capable of drinking, of smoking, of visiting a pub. What happens overnight? I wake up feeling no different. Yet the world around me has changed. You're 18 now, responsible for your actions. It's no longer my parents' fault, it's mine. And as I look around at the other bumbling adults, 
It's definitely true. I'm not the only one with no damn clue. Thank you. This one, actually, shout out to Tim again. I did a workshop with Tim and it was a kind of like mythologically kind of based. And this is one kind of mythologically based one that I wrote. Got two in here, so you know, you might hear another one. It's called Swimming in the June Sea. The sea washes over me as I dive into the waves, along the stones, the path that they pave. In my skimpy swimming costume, not really appropriate for this degree, but planning ahead, well, that's not me. Poseidon, why do you do this? Make the ocean so terribly cold, my hands grasping the last warmth they hold. I swim to burn the calories, to metabolize some heat, the fear that the deep and I should meet. Head barely above the water, the waves filling my mouth. I really should swim further south. But I crawl back to the shore, living beside him and his trident, for all my heat is gone. Sorry, I was going to find it here now. I work at a really cool place, I really love working there, but like, if you forget to turn the lights on for outside, it's like really dark when you go to the fridge and freezers. I'm like scared of the dark, so like, I find it terrifying. So this is kind of a, another mythologic -y one about the dark in the back where the fridge and freezers are. The deepest, darkest corner of the back, the place where no one ever goes, where the fear manifests and grows. At any moment, a thing could attack amongst the fridges and freezers alike. Who knows if something out there could bite? We would have no means to fight back. The service, however, must never hinder. Our sweat and tears shall continue to fall as the fear inside us grows tall. To grab a bag from our back, we never linger. To get the food upon the butter, at the ever devouring, demanding, we sit there and wait. Unbeknown of Lucifer, who sits, trigger under a finger. One day, perhaps, this demon we will fight, unknown to the gods that feast, so that their fear is the least. We cook and fright throughout the night, slicing, chopping, cooking a wonder, praying for lovers never ponder why the star are never on right. It's not really that bad. <laughs> one is also about my work um, and working in a kitchen but slightly more of a different tone it's called kitchen work table of two how I want to be you eating that delicious garlic bread the luscious smell could wake the dead god damn I want some garlic bread salami pepperoni olives and ham that pizza hell I'd eat every gram Alas, it is sad, sadly for table two. Oh, table two, how I envy you. Oh, lasagnas, you creamy, cheesy delight. The strength I muster with all my might to set you down upon table four. I'd have a life supply and still want more. The orders come in, the food flies out. As it leaves, I pull it out. Because food, honestly, I love you, but oh, how I hate tiramisu. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, Ethan. Starting at how old were when you first started writing? Seven. Seventeen. Seventeen. Wow, that's brilliant. So, um, are you at university? Yeah. Are you studying English literature? No. Mental sciences. Mental sciences. Oh, I'm going to say a few mental sciences. You can sort me out. Um, we now have a very famous young man, well, famous on the island anyway, um, and he's dressed very smartly today. There is something that I want to say though, is, is can I just, when I tell you this, I want you to go, ah, oh, it's falling in love. Oh, it's sickening. It's, oh, it's no, sickening. It's, 
Oh, this is no, and um, it's obviously brought a, um, a banner. So I'm now going to introduce the um, famous Tim Callahan Martin, looking very smart and dapper since you're now in love. Oh. Tim, come and get to the stage. Here we go. Look, it's a human right. There you go, sweetheart. All right, Pride, how are we doing? Are you well? We can do better than that. We've all had time for a couple of pints by this point. Ladies and gentlemen, Pride, how are we doing? Are you well? Yeah! That's what we like to hear. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, you'll notice that I am in a suit. There's two reasons for this. The, 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 the biggest one is that I've got a bit of a reputation as the guy who normally dresses up in stupid costumes and silly jackets. But for me, this right here is really important as an event because I'm an openly bisexual gentleman and I think this event right here shows how far we have come in LGBTQ plus rights and if it's okay I'd like you to give a massive round of applause for everyone who's come together to make this event happen. <laughs> Um, and second of all, I'd like you to make an even bigger noise if you can. The real reason I'm in the suit, ladies and gentlemen, because a lot of the Pride events stem back to the Stonewall Riots in New York, and we have come so far. And the thing is that along the way, a lot of people did not make it. And I think we should take a moment to make as much noise as we physically can for our, our brothers and sisters who have fallen in combat. So ladies and gentlemen, please, for everyone who could not be with us today, please, please. Thank you very much. And it's with that in mind that I've got uh, a round of a new poem that I'm going to read for you. First one on the set. Uh, this one's called You Have a Choice. You could. Kill two birds with one stone, but wouldn't it be better to spare them instead? To learn, to love, to live, to grow. In small acts of compassion, take time to show that this world isn't as heartless and as barren as some would have you believe. It's amazing what us tiny humans can achieve when we work together in the name of progression instead of giving in to engineered aggression. Humanity is more than just a parade of flags. Our humanity is not personified by brightly coloured rags. That which unites, excites and binds us is greater than the sum of the parts that divides us. So you can take your fear and hatred, you can dress it as opinion, you can call it inspired by its editorials or holy text or any, no, uh, any other synonym. Naive as hell as I might be, I'm siding with love because I believe when push comes to shove we should be building bridges, not walls. We should offer to help a hand you starting to see why I'm called King Stammers now, aren't you? <laughs> we should offer a helping hand to those who fall. So from this day forth, hold me to my proclamation was to have a platform to address representatives of each and every nation. As long as there are stars in the sky above, you can keep your fear and hatred. This junkie poet chooses love. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Can I just say for, thank you so, so much because like, Every time I get up on a platform like this, where there is an audience who have no idea who I am, or what I do, or why I've been roped up here, it means the world to me that you are sticking around to listen to what I have to say, because I'm just a gobby lad from up north, and the fact that you're all sitting here paying attention to my words means more to me than I can ever articulate. Thank you so, so much. I want to dedicate this next poem to uh, the reason that I'm performing today because I was uh, very uh, politely invited by the very wonderful Miss Donna Jones who's assembled the poets for today. Thank you very much for Donna. You're welcome. Um, what I love about Donna is that Donna is immensely stubborn. And I think stubborn is something that... No, 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 don't, bear with me. Um, I, 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 I don't get why stubborn is seen as something that's a negative, because to me, if you're stubborn, it means you're holding to your values. Um, and I think it's a massively underrated human quality. Um, and this is a really short one, but it's dedicated to Donna. It's called Definitions. Define stubborn. Charmed. Thank you.
Um, this weekend is a really weird one for me because uh, normally uh, there is uh, a woman sat at the back of the audience who's in her early 60s um, and she is uh, colloquially known as Mrs. Clegg, but she is my mum. Um, and she couldn't be here today because she's way up north uh, because my gran is not in the best of health. Um, and that's got me thinking about my own mortality. I'm over the age of 30 now. Oh, I'm not going to get into that. Terrible. Oh no, <laughs> shocking, shocking. Um, and I've overcome a lot in my time with suicidal depression and a cancer scare. Uh, and it got me thinking about my own mortality. And this is another really short one. It's called Beside You in Time. The sands are running shallow in the hourglass, my dear. In the distance, the church bells chime. Do not weep on my new shirt. Do not shed a tear. It is merely the passing of time. Oh, goodness me, there's so many of you here. Thank you. Like you could be on the beach watching drag queens and you're here listening to my silly words. Thank you, that means so much to me. Whilst I'm stalling for time, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, actually, very seriously, this is a very serious point I want to make. Uh, can we get a massive round of applause again for Miss Izzy Rose Barkley? Because she's only been doing this a year and to be that accomplished a year in the new. All right, okay, I'm really about to show my age. Who here remembers cassette tapes? <laughs> oh, thank That's God funny. for that. Thank God for that. I did a gig a few months ago at a student's union, and I was like, who remembers cassette tapes? And they all looked at me blankly. And, and I have never felt so old. Uh, this is about being uh, the last of a generation to try and rule a member of... of, of, of actually, I'm, 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 I will open it, I, I am I am the B of LGBTQ+, um, so it could have been any gender. But yeah, uh, this, this is about trying to woo the object of your affections uh, with a mixtape, it's called C90. Mate, what's going on with you and Susie? Is it serious? Lads. I've made a, a mixtape. <gasps> they will reply and shock their mouths again. The Generation Sonnets came with the warm fuzz of a C90. A 5,400 second long declaration of love that can make you feel so high and mighty. Two sides to play a DJ in a stratosphere of tunes from which to curate, although the quality of the six pack from Curry's was something to debate. And if they included some Nirvana, well then I knew they'd be a keeper because a mutual love of Kurt Cobain could only make our love so much deeper. And there's a part of me that still thinks if you made me a mixtape, my heart would be yours. But if you are going to include any Jim Morrison, yeah? Please make it early doors. Cheers. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to carry on down the humorous route. Um, this is uh, this is about an interaction I had at a bus stop with Mother Nature. It's called Pigeon. I saw a pigeon waiting for the number nine. He looked at the bulletin boards and surveyed the times. Maybe he had a key card or some kind of week-long rover. But he decided upon his journey and then he fluttered on over. And I turned to him and I asked him, Where are you going on life's great journey, Mr. Pigeon? But he did not respond, because he's a pigeon. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> See, the thing is, I've got all of these like little tabs up here, and, and they make me look really organized, but really I'm not, I'm really not. So, um, because I'm of a certain age, I'm a bit obsessed with like late 90s, early 2000s hip hop. Who here remembers Khalees? Three people. This one's gonna die on its ass. I'll perform it anyway. This one's called To Khalees with apologies. My milkshake brings all the bees to my car. I spilt it inside of my car now inside of my car. This could kill me. I'm allergic to bees. Thank you. I just got thrown something. They're pants. Somebody threw pants at me. That's a first. Oh, thank you very much, Sarah.
Oh, oh my goodness, thank you. Thank you so much. That's all right. <laughs> Donna, how am I doing for time? You're fine. Keep going. Awesome, 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 awesome. I will do. I'm cycling through notebooks here at a rate of knots. Oh my goodness. Okay, so um, has anybody ever had a moment where they've been at somewhere and they've really needed to sneeze and it's been a really inappropriate moment? No, just me. Just me. Okay, all right then. Uh, well, this is about that. Um, this is about needing to sneeze at my granddad's funeral. It's called Pressure Cooker. Slowly at first. But trundling forward with momentum so gargantuan, so expansive, so all-encompassing in its instantaneous volatility that all other thought processes wither and retreat into an inky black hollow recess into a delicate cadence. Oh no. I really need to sneeze. Not a subtle sneeze. Not a quiet sneeze. Not a polite sneeze that accommodates the social graces needed in such a delicate position of a sneeze. No, no, I say. This, this is a savage sort of a sneeze. One that gives precisely. Are there any kids in the audience? But there's, there's lots of them. <laughs> it, it, it's alright, I'll substitute it with damn. <laughs> One that gives precisely zero dams that you are at a funeral. The land in which it sows its dams is parched and barren. The harvest was lean, it has no dams to give. <laughs> Reflexively, I feel my body breathe in, and I pinch the bulbous, buttonous snout of that protrudes from my head, hoping to stem it at the snores, but it is too little, too late. Time slows down, and I take small comfort in the certain knowledge that if he was still with us, my granddad would have sniggered like a tiny child. Thank you. One more? Oh goodness me, oh goodness me. Okay, so, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we can have a love poem or we can have one about how London really confuses me. What would you prefer, a love poem or London really confusing me? London! Okay, 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 so, so let's make some noise. Who'd like love poem? <laughs> Vicariously, if either one person makes a noise for this, then it's automatically run. Who'd like a poem about London really confusing me? <laughs> uh, this one is called London Waterloo at Rush Hour. Ladies and gentlemen of Isle of Wight Pride, thank you so, so much for listening to my inane ramblings. And there are some amazing talents coming up. I can really recommend, um, there's Joan Ellis coming up, there's Vicky Clark coming up, and there's Ivana Popov coming up in a little while, who is absolutely incredible. Please, I implore you to stick around for her, she's absolutely incredible. Uh, can we get a mass round of applause for everyone that's performed today? This is going to be my last one. Uh, this is called London Waterloo Rush Hour. There is life on these streets. There is hustle and bustle and things to attend to. Under glass roof of Waterloo sunrise, I lose count of the commuters. Those that are toing, those that are throwing, those that flock hither and those that flock yon. I stand and I wait, basking in this sensory overload and in the balmy morning air. Each and every one of the London natives look at me like I have lost my goddamn mind. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hand you back once again to the incredible Miss Donna Jones. Thank you so, so much. You've been absolutely wonderful. Thank you. I'm honoured. Honestly, you put on with yourself, didn't you? I'm now going to read a little, uh, a, a couple of you see my glasses, they're amazing, aren't they? They're from America. I think they're phenomenal. I stole them from the school that I was working in. They're great, I love them. Has anybody been to Blackpool? Oh, we've got one or two at Blackpool. Fantastic. I went, I used to, my dad was a miner. And so the only time we got away was actually with the Working Men's Club trip in the summer. And it was either Blackpool, Skate Vegas, Skate Ness, or Bridlington, or Cleethorpes. And um, when I came to the island, I was absolutely shocked by the colour of the Solent. It's green, it's jade, it's turquoise, it's fabulous. I was used to Blackpool brown. So you can 
can gather what was being pumped into Blackpool Sea at that point in time. Um, so I went back to Blackpool about two years ago and um, I'm an observational poet. I watch, I listen and then I write and I've written a lot of poems about people on the island but I just want to read you this one about Blackpool. I spent two to three hours in the main square watching everything that was going on. So this one's called Blackpool Revisited. The takeaway box clung to his face like a muzzle, force fed him gristle and meat gunge at the end of the night. With sprayed on lycra, hair extensions and toppling shoes, I thought she looked too young for him until she turned round. Her face was a squashed paper bag, cigarette lined and hard, but he was proud of her lollipop stick thinness and her energy to party hard. In a fight, I want her on my side. Walking alone, his left leg was drunk and left the rest of his body behind. He tried to speak, but his mouth, chewing on a brick, gave up and sucked on Blackpool's salted air. She was getting married in August, but snobbed him and him and him regardless. Well, it was a hen do, and she'd spent weeks making her costume a burlesque black and blood lead. Her mates, her mates laughed, knowing not to take incriminating photos. Her fiancé would batter her if he found out. He'd already had a caution off the police, but I loved her too much, he said. Like midnight pigeons, they assembled, assured that they fitted in, belonged, beautiful and brazen. It didn't matter that their bra straps showed, that their shoes hurt, or that she'd lost a false eyelash. He'd forgotten her name but wanted her anyway, condom or no condom. Well, the night was still early. He could move on to another later. His arched eyebrows, black beyond natural, screamed, Look at me! as he handed out nightclub flyers in satin shorts and paraders paraded his freckled flecked tan. Please, like coloured pins in a tin of unruly needles, prized apart lager fueled battles territorial and tattooed. Wired for sound, the air crackled with tribal dialects. Heavy duty arms hugged each other and professed their male love as mates forever. In her I Have Ebola t-shirt, she slumped to the ground and vomited pink shots, blue balls and leftover lager. The kebab would come later. He sidestepped her, his pigeon-like stump swung round, deftly making his way to the Jesus Angel van. This was a rerun of what he saw every Saturday night. With cellophane sandwich and a cup of compassionate care, he was Blackpool's black and white reality amongst the copper culture of Big Brother, Made in Chelsea and Love Island. For him, love was a night without rain, being bullied by drunken UKIPs and having to prove his asylum status. His sand was the moisture sucking Sahara, his sea seasoned with violence, corruption and the desperation of mothers praying for baby milk. He was a nanosecond on the clock of humanitarian aid. Blackpool would now take care of him. Thank you. Um, I used to work with teenagers in Sheffield. I absolutely loved my job. Uh, had the government not started to make massive cuts, I would still be doing it. But as a result of that, it ended up where I came to the island. And um, I used, my thing is to actually give a voice to people that feel incapable of having a voice to be listened to. And um, I used to work with this young man and um, he used to get very upset, very frustrated, very angry. And I used to say to him something very important, which I'll, I'll tell you what it is whilst I'm reading this poem. And his name was Matty, and, and I actually loved him dearly. And this poem, it may sound as though it's going to be rude, but it's not. It's called Sperm. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> How did you get to the egg first? Did you swim faster than the other sperm? Did you batter them out of the way? Or did your tail have your name on it, Matty? Did God say that you were the one? Or did you chance it like all the millions of other sperm in that race for survival? 
You were strong, lithe and bulked up, swam so fierce until you crashed into her, the egg of existence. Forcing your way through, you made one, said your hellos and started to grow the strength of trees, of new dawns and nights, and together you branched our arms and clenched fists, fighting for your life, fighting everyone you will ever come across. You spent months trying not to drown, but planning your path and screamed your entrance into a life without a father. He didn't care. Already, you were a minus. You glimpsed him once in the market amongst all those other faceless fathers, but in your dreams, you'd imagined him so strong, laughing whilst he threw you onto that cowboy horse of the movies. This man was a broken down nobody, nobody you wanted to meet. You grew hard on the sour tea to street, nursery, school and street. The street paved in minus. Words you struggled to learn, learned that cannabis made you paranoid. Put voices into your head that you didn't want to hear. Told you to arm yourself with cosh and knife, just in case. Just in case those faceless threats sought you out in the dark. You thought you'd found love, but stabbing her in the leg with a pair of scissors sent you crazy. Then you settled some and gave your son a cowboy name. But beating her hard took you over the edge and into prison, back into the battling womb. Battling your brain, you snarled and gnarled the knuckles on your fists. Eczema, like armor plating, coated your skin, burnt and bled it. Scratching it, you scratched a living, wheeling and dealing. But despite all of this, I want you to know one thing. From that moment, from that instant, that you swam your way through millions of other sperm, broke through the membrane to the eye of life, fertilized the egg with your existence, that you, Matty, are special and precious. You are one in a million. Thank you. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Spain, in Ferringola. I think that's how you pronounce it. And I actually got bored with the sun because I get really battened by, bitten by mozzies. And um, so I thought, I need to get away from this. So believe it or not, everything I write, write about is based on truth. There's nothing in, in anything that I write that is not true. And so I decided to spend a day with the street drinkers. So, I can't speak Spanish. And so what I did was, as an introduction, I bought a bottle of cheap wine. And that was my way of actually getting into this group. And I wrote a poem about it afterwards. And the following day, I was going to go back with some food. But they realised that because it was so hot, that they needed to go under yucca trees to get away from this incredible heat. And I could hear these dogs barking next day. And I looked over the veranda where I was staying, and it was the, it was the same guys. And it was like, oh my God, I can't go down there and tell them where I'm staying, because it's not fair on the people whose place I was staying at. So I never got to go back and take food and, and have a chat um, with the ones that could speak English. So this is to, for them. This is no different from the street drinkers in Ride or anywhere else on the island. Street drinkers, Ferringola. In the bronze glow of midday, their sacra curse its high on tufted grass, bleached brown and parched. I cannot tell you their names, I cannot tell you their stories. There is no room for silence here. We talk through the breath of alcohol that sustains them. Formed in a semicircle of archers, the girl with no pants stumbles into a tent I cannot enter, cloistered and safe. Lovingly covered, he protects her modesty, but she does not care about that. She has travelled to a place where sleep comes easy. Love has no name here, no ownership. There are no baskets of loaves or fish here, only tethered dogs that bark their presence. Cut from plastic water bottles holds their sacramental wine. Like a line of hot wax, his chest has been cut open, then sealed. His laugh is the laugh of boiled pranks, a toothless grin. Inside his chunk sunken chest, he says there is a secret form controlled by nipples. It cannot be stolen. 
generous his warmth allows me in and expects very little. He cannot sit still, spots the slow rise and fall of a breath of a body asleep, skin burnt and bleeding. Rifling through a pile of rags, he chooses a ragged quilt and softly covers his friend's torso. His deed is done. Like disciples, the others nod in silent approval. There is a slow playing out of a fight, of slaps and kicks, misjudged and momentary. Like a ballet on a trampoline, they flounder and fall, a commotion that cannot be sustained. The Nordic skinhead arrives late, looks at me with his gaze and takes stock. In silence I wait, my one bottle of cheap wine keeps me in, keeps me safe. Pride takes over, he tells me of his child back home, her language skills and his teaching. Tightly controlled, his care in his boundaries. Regales at the drink with mosquito bitten child, two years old. His contempt is harsh and violent. We share stories I cannot disclose. Wounds 25 years old that would shock you. Then I was touched by grace. Soothed by songs of redemption and no woman, no cry, we join in. I cannot ask what he's running from or what he's running to but he's still beautiful like a new age minstrel. Unch together, they live in this moment. Their dogs are their children that expect nothing. Thank you. I just want to show you this. This is a photograph of my great aunts. And when I came out to my parents, um, I found out that one of my great aunts was a lesbian. Um, in 1920s, but she lived with Mrs. So-and-so as they used to do in that she lodged with Mrs. So-and-so as they used to do. And when I came out to my mum at 30, my mum couldn't say the word lesbian. Um, so what she said to me on the phone was, are you a la 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 um, So that was the standing joke amongst me and all my friends was, are you a la 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 So um, I'm now, do you remember, well, she's still alive, God bless her, I'm so thankful as well, Malala. Malala, the young woman who was shot by the Taliban in Pakistan in order to, um, she was so powerful because she was fighting to continue education, particularly for young women. And fortunately, the bullet just missed her brain, but it affected one side of her face and she was flown to Birmingham. And um, she's now the youngest, um, what's the word, uh, of the world. She's got the most... Nobel Peace Prize, the youngest woman ever, young person to get the Nobel Peace Prize. She's absolutely amazing. And this is for Malala. Which bits of my brain did you want to splatter the world with? Red patterns of courage, equality and rights formed on barricades of glass. Windows that saw schools smoke in ruins. Beheaded policemen hang from town squares. Toffees dropped from helicopters and military guns fighting for peace. I am Malala. The grief-stricken warrior child. I am the gold makai, the cornflower that has waved my girlfriends to lessons in dresses of rainbow flowers. My voice did not stop the bullets, but it has ricocheted around nations of conscience. I am more than an intact hymen, womb and burqa. I am the sentry that marks Taliban's laws, measures hatred in dust and rubble and the fear in my brother's eyes. I am the ripple in a pond of hope, a clock that ticks forward and in my sisters as doctors, teachers and politicians. I am Malala, named the warrior child. Thank you. I'm now going to hand you over to one of my dear friends. Um, she's a fantastic poet. I love her dearly. And her name is Ivana Popov. Pop and Ivana set up a new uh, spoken word uh, event this year in Cows at the, uh, what's it was called? Jolliffs. Jolliffs, if anybody's been to Jolliffs. And it, it was so successful, I hope that she's going to carry on soon. Sorry? Are you alright? Are you about to do it? Okay, come on. My dear friend Ivana. Woo! Thank you. Live streaming. Um, I'm actually 
leaving the Isle of Wight in September. So if someone else wants to step in and do a jolly at Jolliffe, there's an opening, but it won't be me. Away. <laughs> For a while. I'll be back. On that note, this first poem is called There is Life to be Lived. There is life to be lived. There is life to be lived. Feasts to be had, food to be shared. Food prepared with love, shared with love. Love steaming, spilling from pots, pans, casseroles, ladles of love. There is life to be lived. There are rivers to wade through, light plays to observe, wide eyes trembling. There are fish to marvel upon, marvel upon and electric green strands of carbon to be enchanted by. There is life to be lived. There are pink skies, orange skies, yellow skies, gray skies of unfathomable depths. There are clouds of all shapes and patterns. There are clouds. There is life to be lived. There is rain and sunlight and bolts of electricity that do not need to be understood. There is life to be lived. There are people People to bring joy and laughter. People to deliver pain. There are people to know and yourself. You are here for you to know. To know and love when no one else will. There is life to be lived. There is life to be lived. There is dancing, spinning. There are dresses, silk, cotton, velvet. There are fields and fields of poppies. There are brass bands, moustaches ornate carvings, there are stories, there is life to be lived, there is you, there is you, go live it. Thank you. Right, I'm a bit of a stalker, I'm sure we all have our stalkery moments where we just find ourselves staring from a distance. But it's all in the name of love. This is called Stalker on North Lane. The boy is tall and slim, dressed all in black, flat cap, shaving, shy, dimpled smiles. The boy smiles at everyone, but slightly more at dogs, the elderly, men showing muscly arms and girls in faded denim dungarees. The boy hasn't smiled at me yet, though our eyes have locked a few times as I stare him down, down, over the brow of my jacket potato. Thank you. That was in Brighton a few weeks ago and it's this gorgeous boy handing out flyers. Um, I think I chose the restaurant because he was opposite the restaurant. So. All right, does anyone remember phone boxes? Yeah, so um, this thing, the mobile phone, came along and then it got smart and and now I don't think anyone uses them anymore. Has anyone used a phone box recently? No. Silence. Okay. Right, this is an ode to the phone box and it's called Death of a Phone Box. Here I stand, I, the vocal hand, made of sound waves and tapping. Here I stand, I the hand between you and your girl down south. And I, on a Sunday night, I under an orange light and the crackle that will tell your mother sleep easy. On a Sunday night, I through blustering winds and the three words that she will hold onto that will keep her breathing until the summer holidays. But now you have your own slick version of me slipped into your pockets to be connected always and here I stand forgotten no longer will I lean into soft murmurings rush transmissions of essential facts or the crazed cry of a young father the tired weeping of a now orphan no longer will I lean into sweet whispers only the tweet of a bird seeking shelter from the rain or the nervous fumbles of a tramp running from cold shall fill the emptiness. Right, again, oh, this is a bit stalkery as well. So I was at the back of the bus watching a friend 
sat at the front of a bus next to a girl that he was clearly falling in love with. This is a very short one, it's called Watching James Fall in Love with Vera. I know you are falling in love, this time with the crinkle of her eye. The yellow flower you have not seen, the yellow flower will come later when you sit on her other side. Then you will fall in love with that too. Have I got time for a few more, Donna? Right. You probably noticed the theme, these are all love poems. I thought that that would be appropriate for this celebration today. Um, right, has anyone had a shit job? Like a really shit job, yeah? Has anyone had a hot colleague that made the shit job less shit? Yeah. Two people? Yes. Right? Okay. Yes? yes. Nice. Right. So I had a really shit job in a pub on the riverside in Oxford when I was at uni. Um, luckily there was a boy that, yeah, made it all slightly bearable. This is called Sunday's the One Day I'm Dreaming. There's a boy at work. He makes going to work not like going to work at all. More like breathing deeply inside a giant marshmallow. And when I know he'll be there, I wake up early and wash my hair for him, for him on a Sunday. For Sunday is the one day I'm dreaming. There's a boy at work whose sandy arms make the hard work easy. The unforgiving whine of complaints at the bar, the seashell pink mummies that sit and go ah as their angels crush crisps into the carpet. And all the bread crust architects, the half-eaten meals, the wet muddy feet pushing wet muddy wheels. There's a boy at work. There's a boy at work. For him, I would face all of this. The narcoleptic coffee machine and our neurotic boss. I would fold napkins until my fingers bled. I would even bleach the men's toilets. For him, for him on a Sunday. Because Sunday's the one day I'm dreaming. Right, this next poem is for Jess, who I'm really happy to see in the crowd. Are you Jess? Um, yeah. I am Jess. This is Jess. Um, it's actually like, I thought I'd be really embarrassed, but it's such an honor to have you here. So thanks for coming along. Right, this is for Jess. It's called, Why Don't You Just Try It? Or Liberating Barbie. What does it feel like? She whispered when you imagine truth. My face, sorry. You're making me nervous. I'll start again, right? <laughs> what does it feel like? She whispered when you imagine truth. My face gave it away, more honest than any word, a smile so wide it hurt. Like this, I whispered, pressing thumbs into the corners of smile, where two silver hooks ached under miles of thread, pulling up, up, pulled up by a bird that was not taught fear. And through my mind flashed possibility, 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 possible. My ability to say, to be, live, exactly what I felt was there already, had been before the beginning. I remember being given a Barbie doll at seven. I was pinker then, more orange too, by a man with a black ponytail and a beard that was just too sculpted. At seven, it was simple. Ugh, I hate Barbies, I exclaimed, wrinkling my nose at the perfect skin, the permanent line around the line, around the lips, eyes, disproportionate leg in the too long legs, in perfect toes, where was the fold of skin alone? disproportion. At seven, I already smelt something fishy in that frozen smile, so I cut off all her hair, liberating Barbie from the silky blonde shackles. Heck, I gave her wall paint, a toothpick sword, around her wrists a plastic bag, and she flew without a word from the fourth floor. This bare-bottomed goddess landed with a squeak that sounded something like, freedom! I remember writing a letter when I was 10. Dear Zach, you're brilliant. Never let anyone tell you otherwise. 
And if you ever feel low or lonely, remember, I love you just as you are. I wrote that, I did, in one exhalation of my tiny lungs and handed it to a boy named Zach without worrying. What does it feel like, she whispered, when you imagine doing exactly what you want? Being exactly what you feel. My eyes gave truth, more honest than any thought, a peace so deep it caught my breath. Thank you. I've got one more. Um, it's called Peacefully Breaking, and I think it speaks for itself. Again, on the theme of love. They tell us we must aim for wholeness. Mind, body, soul, and brain. They suggest we exercise discipline, find routine, learn to pull the monkey string close. Dependence is a thing to fear, they say, like saturated fats or sucrose. But oh, there is something so sweet in leaning on another human, whispering, help, I am peacefully breaking. Will you stand with me and watch the pieces scatter? Thank you. Thank you, my darling. I'm desperate now, I'm devastated that you're actually leaving the island for a while, but you must come back. I'm now gonna finish the set um, with a poem about love. I know that there are people here that are in love, Tim. And I know that there are people who have been together for a very long time, Joni and Dougie. And my mum's friends who are in their 90s are still together, so it proves that love lasts. And this one is called Wedding Anniversary. There isn't the width of a bus ticket between them. For 61 years, they have shared each other's moisture. The morning's pollen, the night's nectar. One complete life cycle. Their limbs have grown into and out of each other, wrapped in designs of 1951. From 15, as agile and neat is, at 20, moulded and cut in the cut of a sailor's suit childless their one regret now 81 her pufferfish feet struggle to catch up and with his bed head folding patch jellyfish eyes and silence ears that need to be switched on forgetting she giggles the laughter of soap bubbles blow through rainbows at 86 he calls her the powerful one. Sits in silence pretending to chastise. Her bubbles settle on the corners of his mouth, tickling and teasing. Together they laugh, patting each other's hands. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it. I want to say a special thank you to all the poets of Pride and of the island. And I'm sure that we'll be putting on more events, Tim. And Joan and I are performing at the Ventnor Fringe and also at the Isle of Wight Literary Festival. We call ourselves Them Two. And last year's performance was Navy Knickers and Nick TVs. It was comedy and stories. And this year we're called Fake Fur, False Teeth and, and True Love. So get your tickets and come and see our shows at the Ventnor Fringe and the Isle of Wight Festival. 